Today we're going to walk through a brief demo on how to do Case Centroid's cluster analysis within the Altrix product. The Case Centroid's analysis tools are located under the predictive grouping tool category, and there are three tools in particular that we're going to address. One is the Case Centroid's diagnostics tool, the next is the Case Centroid's cluster analysis tool, and finally we're going to address the append cluster tool. So the first thing to discuss is why would someone want to do a case centroids analysis in the first place? And the reason being would be any time that you may have business units, this could be store locations, it could be customers, it could even be uh, individual parts of uh, various products. But any time that we'd like to take that data and create groupings or clusters out of that information, um, that's where a cluster analysis may come into play. Another thing to be aware of is that when you're running a cluster analysis, that's based on multiple numeric variables associated with those items, be it business units, uh, customers, or for example, part numbers. Now in this case, we're going to take a look at individual stores. That's what you see here uh, listed below. We have multiple stores, 526 to be exact. And then we have some information about those stores. Here we have square footage. We could easily also have um, revenue numbers, monthly or annual, or whatever that may be. Um, but we could have some financials associated with those stores. And then we also have some surrounding demographic statistics around those stores as well. Um, so the first tool we're going to talk about is the Case Centroids Diagnostics tool. Uh, when I select that tool, you can see the configuration of it. Uh, the first option is to choose two or more fields that you're using for your clustering diagnostics analysis. Uh, and as we scroll down here, you can see we've selected all of the various um, demographic variables that we have within our data set. The next step is to uh, determine whether you're going to standardize your data or not. Uh, in this case, we did, and we're choosing the Z-score option. You also have an option to choose unit interval. You're going to choose your clustering methodology. And then next, you're going to choose your minimum and maximum number of clusters. Now, this is something that you do want to be mindful of because it can be time consuming uh, to run the diagnostics tool. Um, so ideally, based on your business knowledge, you want to make your best guess on the min and maximum number of clusters that you think you're going to fall within at the end of the day. Um, so here we're setting a range between three and eight. Next, you have your bootstrap replicas, replicates. This is basically telling us the number of iterations that the model is going to run for each number of clusters. So the model is going to run, in this case, 50 times um, for three clusters. It's then going to do it for four and so on up to eight. Um, the maximum number of replicates that you can choose is 200. Uh, and then also you have an option to choose the number of starting seeds, uh, which corresponds to the initial centroids that the model is starting out with. Ultimately, Altrix is going to choose the best solution, uh, and that's kept uh, as, your, uh, as your final solution. If we click on the browse, I've already executed the workflow for time's sake, but if we click on the browse tool and look at the results that we have, uh, we can see a breakdown of the indices that are generated. Uh, and there's two summary statistics. One is the adjusted RAND approach, and then also you have uh, the Kalinsky method as well. Um, what we're looking at here below is two box and whisker plots uh, that's giving us the results of those methodologies. And the output of the tool is information about the distribution of the two statistics for differing numbers of clusters across the bootstrap replicates. The information is conveyed via, as I mentioned, the box and whisker plots, uh, one of each, you, as you can see, one here for the RAND index and one for the Kalinsky index, and summary statistics for the two measures. The preferred number of clusters based on each measure corresponds to one with the highest mean and median of the solutions compared. And so what we're looking at here is I'm, I'm estimating, I'm looking at the highest uh, index and uh, four stands out. I see six clusters stands out as well. Um, I'll also mention that this is not necessarily an exact science. You may um, 
start out with six and come back and also run your model with four clusters. Um, but I'm looking at the highest index and then I'm also looking for the tightest box as well. And I'm also comparing the two, um, seeing where like in this scenario I can see six clusters for the Kalinsky approach is also placed high. So in this case I'm going to choose uh, six as the number of clusters that I'm going to start out with. But again I could easily come back and, and decide, hey, I maybe also like to run the same scenario for four. Uh, but we're going to start out at six. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this window. Um, once you've run the Case Centroids Diagnostics tool and determine the number of clusters that you're going to go with, there's no need for you to execute the tool again within the workflow. So in this case, I have it in a separate tool container, and I'm going to go ahead and minimize that uh, container. So we'll just disable that. And so we're going to go with six clusters. That next brings us to the K-Centroids analysis tool. So when we click on that, we're prompted to give the model a name, which we're calling cluster analysis. We're going to choose the same number of variables, uh, or same variables, I should say, uh, that we selected for the diagnostics, which we have done. Uh, we're going to set this, select the same standardization as well as the same clustering methodology, and then we're going to insert that number six, um, which is the number of clusters that we're going to go with. And then we would also set the number of starting seeds that we wanted to go with as well. And then you have uh, some different plotting options, graphical options for determining how you want your output to be generated. And then there's two outputs to the K-Centroids analy cluster analysis tool. One is the actual model itself, which is what we see here. Um, we could execute that downstream, which we will, or we have, and I'll get to that in just a moment. But then we also have the report uh, that's been generated, and that's giving us the output results of the analysis. And so we're getting a breakdown on the, on the number of stores that are being assigned to each individual cluster, as well as some additional summary statistics on the individual variables that were selected. Okay, so we're going to close this window. Uh, this model could be saved out and retrieved at a later point in time. Uh, in this case, uh, for the demo, uh, we're passing this on to the append cluster tool. So as you can see, there are two inputs for the append cluster tool. One is the actual model itself, and then also we're plugging in our data, which in this case are our store locations. The only thing we're required to do, to do in terms of configuration for the append cluster tool is to give it a name. And for the results of that, we're getting all of our data as well as the appended clusters. In time, the key thing I'd like to know is the store and its corresponding cluster. And so if we look at the browse tool, we can see our final results of each individual store and its corresponding cluster. And um, from here, we would then take this, this information and make whatever business decision or decisions that we need to make. Maybe in this case, in terms of stores, we're determining what stores we're keeping, which ones we're closing, and maybe what stores may be modified in various ways. And we would make those decisions, again, based on the cluster that each store falls within. This concludes how you do clustering analysis within Altrix. Thank you.